Good evening. This is Orson Welles, your producer of a special series of broadcasts, the Mercury Summer Theater of the Air. Tonight presents you with a front row seat at one of the greatest plays ever written. And now let's raise the curtain on the Mercury Theater. Mr. Wells, tonight, for our last broadcast on this series, besides your obedient servant, you'll hear the following Mercury players. Miss Agnes Moorhead, Mr. Edgar Berrier, Elliot Reed, Mr. Reen Tuttle, Mr. William Allen, Norman Field, Mr. Mary Lansing, and our narrator, John Brown. Here follows a half-hour's radio production by the Mercury Theater of William Shakespeare's greatest tragedy. Scenes from King Lear. No, we have divided in three our kingdom. It is our past intent to shake all cares and business from our age, conferring them on younger strengths, whilst we unburdened crawl toward death. Tell me, my daughters, which of you shall we say doth love us most? Goneril, our eldest born? Speak first. Sir, I love you more than words can wield the matter. Dearer than eyesight, space and liberty. Beyond what can be valued, rich or rare, no less than life. With grace, health, beauty, honor. A love that makes breath poor and speech unable. Beyond all manner of so much, I love you. Of all these bounds, even from this line to this, with shadowy forests and with champions rich, with trenchous rivers and wide-skirted meads, we make thee lady. <laughs> what says our second daughter, our dearest Regan? I am made of that self metal as my sister, and prize me at her worth. To thee and thine hereditary ever remain this ample third of our fair kingdom. What shall Cordelia do? Love and be silent. Now our joy, although the last, not least. What can you say to draw a third more opulent than your sister's? Speak. Nothing, my lord. Nothing? Nothing. Nothing will come of nothing. Speak again. Unhappy that I am, I cannot heave my heart into my mouth. I love your majesty according to my bond. Nor more, nor less. Oh, oh, Cordelia, mend your speech a little, lest it may mar your fortunes. Good, my lord. You have begot me, bred me, loved me. I return those duties back as a right fit. Obey you. Love you and most honor you. But I shall never marry like my sisters to love my father or. Oh. What goes thy heart with this? I, good my lord. So young and so untender. So young, my lord, and true. Let it be so. Thy truth then be thy dower. Here I disclaim all parental care, propinquity and property of blood. And as a stranger to my heart and me, hold thee from this forever. Good, my lady. This can't royal live. Hand on my life no more. My life I never held but as a pawn to wage against thy enemy. Out of my sight. Yes, sir. Oh, there. Do kill thy physician and the fee bestow upon the foul disease. Hear me, recreant. I tell thee, thou dost... Oh, my allegiance, hear me. Since thou hast sought to make us break our vow, which we durst never yet, take thy reward... Five days we do allot thee for provision to shield thee from diseases of the world. And on the sixth, to turn thy hated back upon our kingdom. If on the tenth day following, thy banished trunk be found in our dominions, the moment is thy last. Away, by Jupiter! This shall not be revoked. Honest Kent, condemned to exile disguises himself and stays on in England to watch over his beloved king. Now, banished Kent, if thou can serve where thou dost stand condemned, so may it come. Thy master, whom thou lovest, shall find thee full of labors. When old Lear, at the head of his small retinue of a hundred knights, visits his eldest daughter, Goneril, Kent, disguised as a poor serving man, comes upon the king. How now? What art thou? A man, sir. A very honest-hearted fellow. 
and as poor as the king. If thou be as poor for a subject as he is for a king, thou art poor enough. What wouldst thou? Serve it. Who wouldst thou serve? You. Dost thou know me, fellow? No, sir. But you have that in your countenance which I would fain call martyr. What's that? Authority. Hmm. How old art thou? Not so young, sir, to love a woman for singing, nor so old to dote on her for anything. Follow me, and thou shalt serve me. If I like thee no worse after dinner, I shall not part from thee yet. In Lear's train, the favorite of the king is a little fellow in a coxcomb, the medieval cap and bells. This is the court jester, the half-witted, sharp-witted fool. The sweet and bitter fool will presently appear. Sir, what fool? You had best take my coxcomb. <laughs> Why? Your master has banished two one's daughters and done the third a blessing against his will. Dost thou call me a fool, boy? All thy other titles thou hast given away. That thou wast born with. Huh? Oh, nuncle. Thou hadst little wit in thy bald crown when thou gavest thy golden one away. Oh, faith, I had rather be any kind of thing than a fool, and yet... I would not be thee, uncle. Thou hast paired thy wit on both sides and left nothing in the middle. My father? Here comes one of the pairings. Not only, sir, this your all-licensed fool, but other of your insolent retinue do hourly carp and quarrel, breaking forth in rank and not to be endured riot. Sir, I had thought by making this well known unto you to have found a safe redress. But you protect this cause and put it on by your allowance. Are you our daughter? Oh, good my father, I do beseech you to understand my purposes aright. As you are old and reverent, you should be wise. Here do you keep a hundred knights and squires, men so disordered, so debauched and bold, that this our court, infected with their manners, shows like a riotous inn. Be then desired by her that else will take the thing she begs. A little to disquantity your train. Darkness and devils. Saddle my horses. I'll not trouble thee. Yet have I left a daughter. Pray, sir, be patient. Detested kite, thou liest. My train are men of choice and rarest parts that all particulars of duty know, and in the most exact regard support the worships of their name. My father! Oh, most small fault, how ugly didst thou in Cordelia show, that like an engine wrenched my frame of nature from the fixed place, drew from my heart all love, and added to the gall. Oh, Lear, 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 beat at this gate that let thy folly in, and thy dear judgment out. Tis the infirmity of your age, you hath ever but slenderly known. Yourself. Fear nature here, dear goddess, here. Suspend thy purpose. If thou didst intend to make this creature fruitful, into her womb, convey sterility, dry up in her the organs of increase, and from her derogate body never spring a babe to honor her. If she must team, create a child of spleen that it may live and be a thwart, disnatured, Torment to her. Let it stamp wrinkles in her brow of youth. With cadent tears, fret channels in her cheeks. Turn all a mother's pains and benefits to laughter and contempt that she may feel how sharper than a serpent's tooth it is to have a thankless. I... I... I did her wrong. The reason why the seven stars are no more than seven is a pretty reason. Because they are not eight. Yes, indeed. Oh, that, that would make a good fool. Oh, Nuncle, if thou wert my fool, I'd have thee beaten for being old before thy time. How's that? Thou shouldst not have been old till thou hadst been wise. Oh, let me not be mad. Not mad, sweet heaven. Keep me in temper. I would not be mad. <laughs> A 
after his cold reception at the castle of the Lady Goneril. Lear and his train march on to the other half of the kingdom he divided between his eldest daughters. To a second born. I'm glad to see you, Highness. Regan. Regan, I think you are. Beloved Regan, thy sister's not, oh, Regan. She has tied sharp toothed unkindness like a vulture here. Sir, you are old. You should be ruled and led by some discretion that deserves your state better than you yourself. Therefore, I pray you that to our sister you do make return. Say you have wronged her, sir. Ask her forgiveness? Dear daughter, I confess that I am old. Age is unnecessary. On my knees, I beg that you have vouchsafed me raiment, bed, and food. She has abated me of half my train, looks back upon me, struck me with her tongue most serpent-like upon the very heart. What trumpet's that? I know it. My sister's. This approves her letter that she would soon be here. Sister Garner is Regan. Art not ashamed, O Regan, will not take her by the hand. Why not by the hand, sir? How have I offended? I prithee, daughter, do not make me mad. I will not trouble thee, my child. Farewell. We'll no more meet, no more see one another. But yet thou art my flesh, my blood, my daughter. Or rather, a disease that's in my flesh, which I must needs call mine. Thou art a boil, a plague sore, an embossed carbuncle in my corrupted blood. But I'll not chide thee. Mend when thou canst be better at thy leisure. I can be patient. I can stay with Regan. I and my hundred knights. Not altogether so. Huh? I looked not for you yet, nor am provided for your fit wealth. This is well spoken. I pray you, Father, being weak, seem so. What? If till the expiration of your months you will return and sojourn with my sister, dismissing half your train, come then to me. Return to her and fifty men dismissed? Regan said you so. And speak again, my lord. If you will come to me... For now I spy a danger. I entreat you to bring but five and twenty. To no more will I give place or no. I gave you all. And in good time you gave it. Donneru. I'll go with thee. Thy fifty at the double five and twenty. Thou art twice her love. Hear me, my lord. What need you five and twenty? Ten or five? To follow in a house where twice as many have a command to tend you. What need one? Oh, reason not to need. Our basest beggars are in the poorest things superfluous. Allow not nature more than nature needs. Man's life as cheap as beasts. Thou art a lady if only to go warm or gorgeous. Why, nature needs not what thou gorgeous wearst, which scarcely keeps thee warm. But for true need, do heaven. Give me that patience, patience, and need. Do you see me here, you gods, a poor old man, as full of grief as age, wretched in both? If it be you that stirs these daughters' hearts against their father, fool me not so much to bear it tamely. Touch me with noble anger, and let not woman's weapons water drop stain my man's cheeks. No! You unnatural hags! I will have such revenges on you both that all the world shall... I will do such things. But they are yet I know not. But they shall be the terrors of the earth. You think I'll win? No. I will not weep. I have full cause of weeping. But this heart shall break into a hundred thousand flaws. Or ere I'll weep. Lear will go mad. His daughter.
daughters Goneril and Regan will die. But not till war divides them. Till Cordelia, now Queen of France, comes to do battle in the realm of Britain. Before the wheel has come full circle, Lear will find his sanity again and live to see Cordelia murdered. But first the tragedy takes us to a windswept heath. Will it lend you against the tempest? The pull you there. My witch begin to tremble. Come on, my boy. Pull. My boy. Not cold. I am cold. Here is the place, my lord. Let me alone. It will break my heart. I had rather break mine own. Good, my lord. Enter here. This tempest will not give me leave to ponder on things will hurt me more. Who's with him there? Was she? Who's there? What is to seek? What are you there? My lord of Gloucester. Ha! Goneril. Why, dear? They flattered me like a dog to say I and no to everything that I said. But when the wind came to wet me once, and the rain came to make me chatter, and the thunder would not peace at my bidding. There I found him. There I smelled him out. Go to. They are not men of their words. They told me I was everything. <laughs> Tis a lie. I am not a proof. Is not the king? I. Every inch of him. When I do stare, I see how the subject quakes. I pardon that man's life. What was the cause? Adultery. Thou shalt not die. Die for adultery. No. The wren goes to it in a small gilded fly. There's lecture in my sight. Toot, 
to luxury, pell-mell, for I lack soldiers. Behold John simpering dame, whose face would be a forked presage snow that minces virtue, and does shake the head to hear a pleasant name. The fiction of the soiled horse goes toot with a more riotous appetite. Down from the waist their centaurs. Mm. The women all above. But to the girdles of the gods inherit beneath it all the fiends. There's hell. There's darkness. There's a sulfur pit burning, scalding, a stench consumption. I. Ah. Give me an ounce of civet, good apothecary, to sweeten my imagination. Oh, let me kiss that hand. Let me wipe it first. It smells of mortality. Good friend, I prithee take him in my arms. I have all heard a plot of death upon him. Does a little ready? Lay him in this way, my lord. See how yon justice railed upon yon simple thief changed places and handed handy. Which is the justice? Which is the thief? Hmm? Thou seen a farmer's dog bark at a beggar? I sir. And the creature run from the cur? There thou mightst behold the great image of authority. A dog obeyed in office. Thou rascal beetle, hold thy bloody hand. Why dost thou lash that cord? Strip thine own back. No hot little to use her in that kind for which thou whipst her. The user hands the cousiner. Through tattered clothes, small vices do appear. Robes and furred gowns hide all. Plates in with gold, and the strong lance of justice hurtless breaks. Armored in rags, a pygmy straw is pierced. No matter and impertinency makes reason in that. When we are born, we cry that we are come to this great stage of fools. A good block, it were a delicate stratagem to shoe a troop of horse with a felt. I'll put them poop. When I've stolen upon these sons in law, then kill. 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 Leah, carrying in his arms the dead body of Cordelia. Good 
Murderers. Traitors all. I might have saved her, but she's gone forever. Cordelia. Cordelia. Stay a little. What is that, sis? Her voice was ever soft, gentle, and low. An excellent thing in woman. Sir, your eldest daughters have fordone themselves and desperately are dead. And my poor fools hanged. No, no, no life. Why should a dog, a horse, a rat have life for now? No breath at all. I'll come no more. Never, 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 never. Pray you, undo this button. Thank you, sir. You see this? Look on her. Look her lips. Look there. Look there. He fades. My lord. My lord. Vex not his ghost. Oh, let him pass. He hates him to put upon the rack of this tough world. Stretch him out longer. He is gone indeed. The oldest has borne most. We that are young shall never see so much. Nor live so long. just heard the Mercury production of King Lear. Mr. Wells will return in just a moment. And here again is Orson Wells. Our thanks to you, the audience, for joining us. Please look for us again until then. The Mercury remains, as always, obediently yours. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.